I now recognize the gentlelady from California, Ms. Porter. She's recognized for her questions. Dr. Collins, what percentage of revenue do private insurance companies spend on administrative costs? You know, between about 17 to 18% of, of spending in private insurance plans. So if I pay my insurance company $100, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 dollars go to administrative costs. What about Medicare? What do they spend on administrative costs? You know, that range is about you know three to five, three to five percent. Three to five, spending. three to five percent. About three to five percent, right here. And if we look at just billing costs, just billing and insurance costs, Medicare is at one percent. Wait, private companies spend. 17 times more on administrative costs than Medicare. What are private insurance companies spending on that Medicare is not? Does Medicare spend hundreds of millions of dollars on television advertisements like private insurance does? Dr. Collins? Uh, no. Does Medicare spend millions of dollars on stock buybacks to shareholders? No. Does Medicare um, spend money on marketing? Private insurance likes to put its name on stadiums and PGA tournaments. Is there a Medicare arena? No. Does Medicare spend $23 million on executive pay like private insurance companies do? No. We know how much it costs to run a high quality health insurance program. $1. Out of $100, research shows that Medicare spends 1.1% on administrative costs. We spend $4 trillion on health care every year. We could save $200 billion on administrative costs with Medicare for All. And those savings, they could go to expand Medicare. We could spend that money to let patients see dentists. We could let, spend that money to let patients pay for hearing aids, to help older adults afford eyeglasses, to bring down the cost of prescription drugs, to finally pay mental health professionals for the work they do. Instead, all this money is wasted. We're not talking about paying to keep the lights on in operating rooms or improving the quality of care. All this money is used to, to pay big insurance to push paper. It's death by 200 billion paper cuts. Dr. Sachs, what is it about the U.S. market that leads to these sky-high administrative costs? Congresswoman, there is no market. These are local, concentrated providers that have tremendous power to set their prices and to set extraordinary salaries. We should contemplate that the so-called not-for-profits in this country pay their hospital directors $5 million. This is unbelievable. And so this is why these costs are, why the prices are so high. The administrative costs are so high because we don't have a system, because we spend 20% of our spending just to funnel money between organizations, which is something that other countries don't spend. Dr. And Sachs, I, would like to I, say, I wanted to I ask like you, to Reclaiming my time for one second, Dr. Sachs, I wanted to ask you specifically about standardization um, and what role that might play in reducing some of this waste that we could reallocate to healthcare costs. Well, when you uh, go in for billing, there is no standardization on anything, on the information technology, on the systems, who's in, who's out, what's going to be reimbursable. Everything is completely opaque. Everything is completely discriminatory depending on who is being involved. So standardization is a big part of all of this because with, when you lack standardization, you put in resources to suck out whatever rents you can and we end up, as you counted those $17 out of every 100, basically lost. Reclaiming my time, basically reclaiming wasted. my time, Dr. Sachs, we heard today about the cost of Medicare for All, but there's a cost to letting insurers, paperwork, patients, and providers to death, and that cost of inaction is $200 billion on administrative costs. Now, administrative costs waste money, but they also waste healthcare workers' time. A recent study found that a majority of doctors, 56%, support a single-payer health care program. Why? Because today doctors spend only one quarter of their time with patients. What are they doing with the rest of their time? Paperwork. 90, and I want to also, I want to add, 
not only would 50 to 56 percent of doctors support Medicare for all, but patients would have the most choice under Medicare for all. The health insurance coverage with the biggest network is Medicare. No private insurance comes close. 99% of pediatric, non-pediatric doctors participate in Medicare. So I want to recap. Medicare for all would save many on administrative costs, $200 billion a year. Medicare for all would give patients the most choices, 99% of non-pediatric providers, and Medicare would let doctors practice medicine. Not surprisingly, given these three things, what do we get with Medicare for All? Better health outcomes. And that's why I support Medicare for All, because I support patients over paperwork. I yield back. The gentlelady yields back.